Okay, hey everyone, welcome to the uh, Conveyor Community Call for February 8th, 2024. With the recording going, I'm going to go ahead and repaste the link in the chat. If you don't mind, please just adding your name to the attendee list. That would be um, fantastic. <clears throat> My name is Dylan Murray. Um, the first topic that we have per usual is just welcoming any new members. So um, anyone that this is your first meeting. You'd like to introduce yourself. Um, just tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from. I think I, I recognize most of the names, but. OK, either too shy or everyone's returning. So welcome back. Um, we have two topics on the uh, demo roadmap discussion today. So um, I'll start with uh, David. You want to go first with re-implementing re Prow plugins in Conveyor. It'd help if I unmute myself first. Are you guys able to see the screen? Yep. OK, so in the interest of making ourselves like a real community, one thing that I thought would be uh, helpful to us is to have a bot running around doing things for us. Um, so what we've done is we've kind of copied what exists in Prow and just re-implemented it using GitHub Actions and GitHub Workflows. So um, there are pull requests all across Conveyor. Um, and what they do is they introduce two uh, basically two separate workflows, one to handle issues as they come in and they get created, and another to handle issue comments. So uh, when you create a new issue, it automatically is trying to enforce our triage gu guidelines. And essentially what that means is for an issue to be properly triaged. It should be in the planning board. It should have a kind, like a, a bug or a doc fix or that kind of thing. It should have a priority, how important is it to be fixed, and it should be marked as triage accepted. Um, so that's the, the basic thing that we want to kind of make happen across conveyor so that we have easy, uh, ways to uh, track progress across the, uh, across the project without having, to, without having to have someone dedicated to staying on top of it. Uh, so you'll see when you open a new issue, uh, you'll be greeted by this message that like this is awaiting triage, and you can give it commands. Uh, one thing that is also true is if you add uh, like a good first issue, can't remember what it is. Um, if you add a good first issue label then what should happen if it's not broken i haven't actually tested that since i made other changes but what it should do is it should add a comment that sends you to the cncf guidelines for uh good first issues and uh, reminds you exactly how to um let me go ahead if i um i go into the actions you can actually see that it's reconciling the issue because it was on the label event. Let's run. So now I'm going to go ahead and see if it. There we go. Whew, I was concerned there for a second. So um, you'll see that it takes you to the criteria for CNCF issues and marking them as good first issues. So that's what we have in the, those. Um, and Going forward, we're going to re-implement some of the other Prowl plugins, um, and that is yeah, that's it. Any questions? Sweet. All right. Thank you. Thanks, David. <clears throat> Any questions for David? That is a uh, significant help to me personally. So big, big thank you for me. OK, <clears throat> thank you. Moving on. <clears throat> um, up next, we have, um, am I sharing my screen? Yeah, OK. Um, 
Sam and Emily are working on uh, developing a new provider for the analyzer. It's a Kubernetes provider. So um, Sam, Emily, who's, who's sharing the screen? Who wants to take over here? I'll kick off. Yeah, I'll share for now. And I think Emily's going to take over for the demo bit. OK. Uh, sharing the screen in the meeting is always the hardest part. It's like coming across. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, over the last few weeks, uh, Emily McMullen and I, along with help from uh, Sean Pranav on the analyzer team, have been working on a new provider that's capable of analyzing uh, the disposition of an application in a live Kubernetes cluster. Um, this is intended to be the first step towards making conveyor as a whole aware of the platforms that applications are hosted on. Um, some of the motivating uh, Animus here is to, to permit, permit analysis of an application both before and after modernization. Uh, one major goal being to help admins ensure that best practices are followed during the modernization process. Uh, you know, maybe you're going to find you're moving between two cloud providers, you're going to identify problems moving from one specific vendor to another, or maybe you're going to migrate a, you know, a, an ancient uh, enterprise Java app into Kubernetes. And once you've done so, you want to make sure that uh, everything's deployed securely and uh, you know, following best practice. So our uh, our first major milestone with this is to, to get it integrated with the Contra uh, command line tool. Uh, under the hood, we're using Open Policy Agent as our rules engine, uh, which gives us the, the Rego policy language. Rego is really expressive and easy to write rules in, and it's, it's pretty well known, I think, within uh, the Kubernetes community as a whole. Uh, it's used, for instance, with uh, uh, Gatekeeper for policy enforcement on a cluster. And our rules uh, for this provider, can they can be entire Rego modules, so they can be really complex. Uh, we also uh, provide a feature just to use a single expression and in order to facilitate using a single expression under the hood, we have a built-in library of inventory building Rego policies that once the provider uh, has pulled stuff down from the cluster live, it organizes it into data structures and then uh, runs some of these kind of uh, inventorying uh, policies that organize the, the data in a way that's really easy for a, a uh, rules author to, to query with just a single expression. So these are these are some examples of uh, how simple it can be to write a relatively complex rule um, using this this single expression here. Uh, you know the the botting example here, this lonely pod, is a is an example of a of a pod that's been deployed outside of the ownership of a say a deployment or a replica set or what have you. So we, we can detect very easily uh, that it doesn't have an owner reference um, just by in this. This expression here, the uh, Kubernetes Rego expression down at the bottom there, we this collection is a is a shorthand that we we provide with that inventory module, and then it's just finding any 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 number of pods uh, that don't have owner references. Easy enough. And this is what that looks like in the analyzer output format. Uh, here it's obviously giving us the message about that lack of an inter reference and is showing us the coordinates to the offending pod in the cluster. So I'm going to pass this over to Emily. She's got the demo video of integration with Contra. Yep. Um, do you want me to share my screen or okay, I can do that. Yeah, sorry that I think that's going to work best. I'm not I'm not sure how well running the video is going to work off of my screen. Gotcha. One 
second. You can do it as well, only if you need me to. Just let me know. Um, so I am on my new Mac and I apparently have not shared my screen before, so yeah, I have right. to. <laughs> oh, no, no probably change my settings and restart it if uh, something oh. doesn't work. Sorry to put you on the spot. Linux okay. to the rescue here. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Uh, hopefully you guys can see this. Yep. So this yeah. is, as uh, Sam was mentioning, the Kubernetes provider integration with Kantra. Um, and this is not fully completed yet. So this will be my own image that I'll be overriding in Kantra. But the rule that we're going to be testing um, on deployments is the replica set to one. So in my cluster, you can see that I have a deployment and I'm grabbing the number of replicas on it. Um, and then these are a couple files that the Kubernetes provider needs, a settings file that points to namespaces. The, I'm sorry, can you go back a little bit, um, Dylan? Just to those, thank you. So we have the settings file pointing to the namespaces my cube config, <coughs> excuse me, my cube config, and then the GBK of what we want to look for, as well as a file that has the Rego expression. So the deployments with the replica set to one. And we can go from there, Dylan. And this is my cancer command. I'm going to pass those two files in as well as the Rego capability to Cantra. And um, it's a little messy looking right now, but we can see that it has found the deployment that's in my cluster that has the replica set to one. I'm sorry, I was reading the comment. Someone asked if we can increase the font. I can't. <laughs> Pre-recorded, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, and as far as the Cantor integration, that's what we have now. Like I said, it's not 100% done, but it is almost there, I think. Awesome. Thank you. Now I can turn it back to Sam. Great work, Emily. I think it's... Uh... Really impressive that in such a short time you already have it talking to uh, to the provider in a separate container. Thank you. All right, and the screen juggling game again. Okay, so uh, next steps uh, we need to write more. Uh, rules here. We, we've we started writing a best practices rule set that's based on um, some community uh, Kubernetes best practices guidance, as well as uh, Red Hat communities of practice regular policies uh, repository, where they've already accumulated quite a bit of them. So we're in the process of uh, translating them into the analyzer rule set to have a, a complete out of the box best practices rule set ready to go with this provider. Uh, we need to, uh, <laughs> as we as we uh, move along, we need to now write enhancements uh, and, the, of course, the implementation of support for multiple external analysis providers in Analyzer, LSP, and Contra to flesh this out fully. And uh, finally, write some enhancements to introduce the concept of, of application platforms and platform awareness into the conveyor UI and hub. And this is this is just a little preview of uh, output from the Kubernetes provider uh, in the conveyor uh, analysis static report. So it's not uh, fully fleshed out, but you can see the direction that we're going with it. Uh, in the slide deck, which is linked in the community meeting notes, there's links to the the enhancement uh, for this provider. 
uh, in the conveyor enhancements repo and of course the the link to the source as well all right thank you very much uh any questions i can answer there is one in the chat um can we publish the branch in the readme and the command so that people can try it out for contra is that what you're talking about sean i assume Yeah, I was just asking if we could uh, publish this as a demo that other people could run on their machines, or if we need to do more work before we can do that. Um, if you mean in Contra, it would require a bit more work. Um, I think you can run it from the Kubernetes provider repo itself. I've, cool. I'll push, um, I'll push, I, I wrote a gRPC client that talks uh, the provider protocol to generate that static report thing. Um, so I can at least put up the demo uh, for that. So you can you can run real rule sets uh, and get a get a response back. That it won't be in that static report format. That took a little bit of extra magic this morning, but uh, give people something to play with. I have a question, not specific to this version and the work, but in general around the Cantra piece. Uh, Darren, if any timelines are there when the Cantra would be merged with the main branch, so that uh, the reason why I'm saying this is our end customers are having difficulty reading out the results using the YAML format. They would like to view in the standard HTML format where things were pretty standard. Sorry, I'm a little confused on the question. Um, today, the today Contra supports dumping the report out in YAML or the static report, I believe. Are you asking? Okay, no, I'm saying that when will the Cantra get merged with the release branch, as in which you are pushing in the quid.io as a release, uh, release 0 0.3 at this moment? Um, let me there. I thought we have uh, the release of three branch is only going to contain backports. So like R03, that is for an LSP, analyzer LSP, not for Cantra, I believe. RC03, are you talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so Cantra is having already like the HTML format, like we can read the report in the HTML format, but in the LSP one, uh, I think we can't analyze the LSP image. Yes. Uh, okay. Basically, I'll rephrase my question. It's around uh, our client normally uses the version available on Operator Hub. So at this moment, we uh, the, we are not allowed to use the Cantra version, which is not officially released as general availability or even close to it at this moment. It's un still under development. I, I don't know that I, I don't really agree with that. Like there's, there is a 030 release of Contra in GitHub. So this, we, it's not an operator, right? It's a CLI tool. So we wouldn't release this to operator hub. Are you looking for like a like right now when you install conveyor zero three in operator hub, that's still just upstream release of conveyor, right? So okay, so okay, I'll uh, if if I club all the questions together, when will the uh, UI version on the analyzer LSP be available? Any roadmap on that? Uh I don't think they're so Contra is the the CLI front end uh, for the analyzer LSP that provides the static reports in any schema format, or um, the UI through the hub provides like the the you know web interface uh, which you install by the operator. I don't think analyzer LSP other than those two front ends. There's there's no plan to add any any kind of UI or anything to it, as far as I understand. If I'm understanding the question. Okay, sure. Mm, thanks for this. Maybe if can someone hold the 
image which is available on Quay.io, which corresponds to Cantor release. Cantor is a command line tool. There's not, I don't believe there's a, a, a Quay release. There's a, there's a static report oh. image that is actually producing the report. Is that what you're referring to in terms of UI? Yes. At least the uh, yeah the output we are looking at is in the form of HTML. So that of course okay uh, I'm mixing two things. Where get a sense that okay, Cantra provides a HTML static report and there's no plan to merge Cantra with uh, Analyzer LSP at this moment. Cantra and Analyzer LSP are two different things. So yes. But I'm, but I'm sorry, I feel like I'm, I might not be understanding your question, so. No, I think uh, I have a clarity on this, thanks for this. Okay. If um if you have more questions, I'm happy to uh, keep chatting in, in Slack if you like. I, uh, th there may be just some confusion about, um, I, I know there are two CLI tools to the LSP analyzer in Contra, but they have different purposes, so. Okay. At this moment, uh, the images available in Quay.io for the release are RC 0.3.0. Is it using the same Docker file which is available on the main release branch? It's using it's the sense? Docker files in release 03 branch. Okay. Uh, are there any additional rule sets which Red Hat is working at this moment, uh, which we can consume it or it's not? Not in the plans. Because... Um, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Additional rule sets for any specific uh, languages. Are they being all, uh, under development or not at this moment? Um, I think that this falls under. Um, so um, Emily is currently working on enhancement around multi-language support in general, where we need to break out a lot of the um, the assumptions we made around Java being, being the main provider. And we also bundle all these providers into one image. Part of that is discussing what we do about community rule sets. <clears throat> I don't think anyone has a really an answer on that just yet. Um, so rule sets for other languages would fall into this category because right now the rule sets that are in conveyor are generally targeted towards Java. Um, are you interested in uh, contributing rule sets for a different language? Yes, we are. We already have done certain uh, rule sets development at our end. We'll be happy to share with you. So I think um, I would defer to Pranav or Sean here. What, what what should we do about if we wanted to have communal rule sets that are targeting something other than Java? Would we still want those contributed to the rule sets repo with some pattern enforced or I not yet? So uh, right now, I would agree. Yeah, that would be the I would put up a PR with a new top level directory for that particular provider slash language. Um, and we can break this all up when we get Emily's enhancement in. Yeah, yeah. As like, we right now we can just uh, dump it in the rule sets while we figure out how to organize that. I, I just don't think we have a place yet to pull any of that stuff from Bobby yeah, the uh, ecosystem. I, yep. I yeah, you can create a new directory and then uh, place your rules in it and create a PR. No, sure. Uh, maybe we'll talk on Slack about the process. We'll try to contribute. Yep. That'd be fantastic. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, and um, just to add on, any plans to add Node.js provider uh, as an official release, as in release uh, 0 0.4 sometime, or as a general availability? Yes, um, absolutely. Uh, in fact, it was one of the languages that we're targeting for the 0.4.0 release. Um, as I mentioned, the prerequisite to that is breaking out the providers into their own images um, and then supporting running separate providers. So um, 
the short answer is yes. Uh, in terms of how we get to that point, I think we're still figuring that out. And probably a follow up. Is there a timeline to it? Because these are all very critical points for us. Uh, yep, we do have a timeline for 040. Um, give me one second. I guess I'll ask too, are you working with yes. the Node.js provider? Because there's not really anyone that I'm aware of that's maintaining that. Is that something that your team is willing to maintain? Not sure if you'll be uh, able to maintain, but uh, on our side, we did develop this and certain use cases we did execute, which worked well. Okay. Um, give me one second just to pull up the planning. So we have a um, we have a zero four zero board, which again I don't know if the, the Node.js provider is actually explicitly called out here, um, but the, we're setting the target date for this at the end of April. Um, you'll notice that the big uh, the big work to, to get to that point, right, is this RFE, which is multi-language support. Um, actually, we don't have Node.js targeted here because, again, we're not, no one on our team is really is maintaining this. So if, you, if this is something that you're actively using and you're willing to maintain the provider, I, I don't see why we couldn't include this in 040, but it's just not a provider that we are working with um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So the, the whole purpose here, right, is we would need to break out each one of these providers into their own separate uh, images, which today, the Golang, YQ, Java, all these providers are baked in a singular image. We want to break them all out into separate providers um, and then allow Conveyor to, to selectively execute them. Um, so if you are already using the Node.js provider and you're interested in maintaining it, then I don't see a reason why we couldn't include it in 040. Um, but I just, I'm not aware of anyone that's currently actively developing and maintaining this. Actually, so sometime back, as in a few months back, we had an exchange around it uh, over email. Where we... Yep. And I remember we, we I think the intention was that if, if you guys wanted to support the rule sets and the provider for it, we would happily make sure that it's integrated into conveyor. Um, but we, we just don't do this on a day-to-day -day, day basis, so I, I can't vouch for the Node.js provider right now. Okay. And I don't know if anyone else on the team can jump in if I'm misstating this, but uh, I'm not aware of anyone on our team that's currently developing it. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, we have a generic provider uh, uh, that you could use potentially with Node.js, but we haven't tested it ourselves because... Uh, we don't really have access to uh, applications, rule sets, and whatnot. So, am I am I wrong in thinking that the like introducing multi language support and all the external providers would remove any roadblocks to someone working on a Node.js provider and having that? Like, I don't know that it would necessarily. I don't know that it would need to be included in conveyor in order for it to work. Yeah, you're exactly right, David. Um, okay. For 040, having support for running arbitrary providers, that allows you to execute any provider you want. So um, if you had a Node.js provider working, it, you'd be totally freed up to use that with 040. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, thanks. Okay. Okay, one last question is for Sean. Uh, Sean, this is family on our discussions around uh, issue number 472, if I remember correctly. Uh, this is around uh, usage of root user to run the analyzer. I know you have fixed it uh, as part of your current release, but uh, there was also a question around that when the issue comes, the right error message was not getting populated. Has that also been addressed, or this is something yet to be done? I think this is yet to be done. Like, um, I think we're talking about grabbing the 
basically as the byte stream has ended prematurely and making that note of exposing that message is basically the language server um, failed. Uh, right now it just says that like the burpee street call is um, I don't believe that that uh, has been fixed yet. Um, I think this might actually be a decent first issue and so I'll write it up um, and get that published for a first issue. Um, that would be something that I will get done today. Thanks, Sean. Yep. That's all from me. Okay, great. Thanks for um, for raising this. Let's see, uh, just jumping back, any other discussion topics <clears throat> that folks would like to bring up? Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Hope you have a great rest of the day, uh, and we'll see you all in two weeks. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.